Shalom. We are uh, going to take a look today at Psalm 12. For the leader on the Shemini, the Psalm of David. Help, O Lord, for the faithful are no more. The loyal have vanished from among men. Men speak lies to one another. Their speech is smooth. They talk with duplicity. May the Lord cut off all flattering lips, every tongue that speaks arrogance. They say, by our tongues we shall prevail, with lips such as ours, who can be our master? Because of the groans of the plundered, poor, and needy, I will now act, says the Lord. I will give help, he affirms to him. The words of the Lord are pure words, silver purged in an earthen crucible, refined sevenfold. You, O Lord, will keep them, guarding each from this age evermore. On every side, the wicked roam when baseness is exalted among men. I am recording this now uh, during the holiday of Passover. We are now on the fourth day of Passover, and we are continuing to hear news each and every day of an increased number of people infected with COVID-19, uh, an increased number of people who are dying in our country and in our world. We don't know when the curve will be flattened and we don't know when the peak will arrive. We can only hope that it will be as soon as possible. And we can only hope that our social distancing and sheltering in place, staying at home, and other efforts will bear fruit. But we simply don't know. So the psalmist is, I think in certain ways, exaggerating the situation around him. He's saying that the faithful are no more, the loyal have vanished from among men. That sounds to me like hyperbole. It must be that there are faithful in the world and in the surroundings of the psalmist, that there are loyal people, that there are good people and righteous people. But it feels to the psalmist as if there are no such people. And therefore he overstates the case. He says, on every side the wicked roam, when baseness is exalted among men. He talks about the idea of baseness and evil as something that is lifted up, while at the same time, the imagery of the psalm seems to imply that while wickedness and baseness prevail, God is somehow asleep at the wheel, that God is somehow taking a nap, lying down and resting while the wicked prevail. We know this from the language in the psalm where God says, I will now act, and that is the translation I have in front of me, but the Hebrew says, Ata akum. Now I will get up. The translation is correct in the sense that it is um, referring to uh, God's recognition that God has to act and act quickly against evil and against the base among men. But the Hebrew akum literally means to rise up or to get up, almost as if God is taking a siesta in a prone position, and now has to get up and do something and do something quickly, because God has understood and realized that the forces of evil have become exalted and lifted up among men. So now God has to take very strong and drastic measures against evil. When we hear bad news each and every day, when we hear of the rising 
rates of infection and the rising rates of those who are dying. When we hear all the, the disturbing news about unemployment, recession, possible depression, when we see how this has affected families and the dis disproportionate, disproportionate number of, of people in our society who are disenfranchised or people of color who are being infected and dying from COVID-19, when we hear all the bad news, it's easy to go kind of global and imagine that because this pandemic is all around us, that there is reason to give up and despair and throw our hands up with powerlessness and with a sense of, of hopelessness. Well, it might be easy to do that, but that is really not what we ought to be doing at this time. Just as the psalmist uses hyperbole to imagine that wicked and evil are all around him, he doesn't mention in the psalm that there are rays of light and there is goodness all around him as well. But he does mention that God is, in a sense, getting up and waking up and intervening in order to bring God's presence into the world to bring deliverance and to bring help. When we catch ourselves on the verge of despair and we start to uh, take in all the bad news around us and imagine that that is the only reflection of the true reality in our world, we allow ourselves to fall into a trap that we must not uh, fall into. Instead, when we catch ourselves with that kind of dark, despairing thinking, it's important to remember that at such times, the Spirit of God can rise up within our minds, our souls, and our hearts, that the Spirit of God can rise up in the world around us, that we can focus on the good that is around us, that we can focus on the hope that exists both in possibly the treatment of this pandemic and the possible development of a cure and a virus, uh, of the virus, and a vaccine rather, that will prevent the virus from, from infecting so many of us. There are many reasons to hope. There are many more reasons not to give up, not to despair. When we feel that surge of hopelessness rise up within us, or those who are around us. It is within our power to put that spirit of hopelessness down, put it in its place, and instead allow the redemptive power of God, God's power of help and deliverance, to prevail within our hearts and our souls. In this way, we can help not only ourselves get through each and every day of this, but we can help those around us as well. Thank you.